Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I'm John, and as always, thank you so much for being here. Good topic. Let's do it. What are some real, weird, X-File type stories? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. The village that fell asleep. The remote village of Kalachi, Kazakhstan, suffers from an unusual problem. Since 2013, up to a third of the village's tiny population has suffered from extreme sleeping sickness. Residents have reportedly been carrying out their normal daily routines before suddenly falling asleep and slipping into comas that have lasted for as long as two weeks. Upon awakening, the victims have suffered elevated blood pressure, nausea, blinding headaches, and memory loss. Some residents have fallen asleep in this manner on multiple occasions. Baffled doctors and scientists have tested radiation levels, carbon monoxide readings, and searched for high levels of metal salt, which can be toxic. At the time of writing, there are no obvious causes for the malaise. Many have blamed the disused Soviet uranium mine that sits long abandoned on the outskirts of the village. But there are no historical reports of miners suffering from similar symptoms. While the scientists are entirely perplexed by the situation, the president of Kazakhstan has vowed to look into the bizarre situation personally and rehouse the unlucky villagers if necessary. Maybe not X-Files exactly, but the Jonestown Suicide Massacre is definitely up there as one of the most bizarre things to happen in human history. I can never wrap my head around how someone's words can be so powerful that he can convince 1,000 people, many of whom are well-educated, to kill themselves and their children. Maybe it's because I've never really been religious, so I'm quite detached from their mindset, but how can someone possibly be delusional enough to follow in the footsteps of a madman? The Green Children of Woolpit The legend of the Green Children of Woolpit concerns two children of unusual skin color who reportedly appeared in the village of Woolpit in Suffolk, England, sometime in the 12th century, perhaps during the reign of King Stephen. The children, brother and sister, were of generally normal appearance except for the green color of their skin. They spoke in an unknown language and would only eat raw broad beans. Eventually, they learned to eat other food and lost their green pallor. But the boy was sickly and died soon after he and his sister were baptized. The girl adjusted to her new life, but she was considered to be rather loose and wanton in her conduct. After she learned to speak English, the girl explained that she and her brother had come from St. Martin's Land, a subterranean world inhabited by green people. The Lead Masks Case In August of 1966, two men left their village in Brazil to go to Rio de Janeiro to purchase a car and some supplies. They took a bus to the city, then bought waterproof coats and a bottle of water from a couple of shops. Three days later, their bodies were found on a hillside. Each man wore a full suit, a waterproof coat, and a mask that led over his eyes. The empty water bottle lay on the grass between them. A small notebook was found with them, on which was written in Spanish-Portuguese 1630, be at the specified location, 1830 in just capsules. After the effect, protect metals and await a signal mask. The cause of death was never firmly identified, there was no sign of trauma on the bodies, and the formal autopsy was delayed. By the time it was conducted, the internal organs were too decomposed for reliable testing. Nobody knows how those two men came to be on a hillside, formally dressed, and wearing lead masks. Nobody knows what the capsules the note referred to were. Nobody knows what killed the men. In all my years of reading this, I never read about this story, but as soon as I finish this video, I'm going to go look this up. That's uh, very interesting. It's a shame it'll probably never be solved, but we could speculate. The Jersey Devil. As far as strange creatures go, this one interests me a lot because there are a few police reports where officers have written down seeing it and shooting at it to no effect. Perhaps it was a cover-up for some bad police work, but... I believe one officer was called to the area 
because the Jersey Devil was causing a ruckus, sounding like human screams. This was a decade ago, so there was no body cam or dash cam footage. The Ghost R's of Bolivia. This one was eventually solved, but the premise is interesting. Manitoba Colony thought the women were being R'd by demons because the women kept falling asleep and waking up R'd, but with no recollection of what happened. They tried as hard as they could to stay awake, but they never could. It turns out nine men were basically gassing the entire house in order to break in and R the women. Officially, there were at least 130 victims until two of the men were caught and their plans fell apart. They used a cow anesthetic supplied by local veterinarians in order to spray the entire family asleep, managing to R at least one member of half of the households. Even the men and boys were R'd. The Disappearance of Jaius. This is one that still keeps me up at night, so if you're squeamish, do yourself a favor and stop reading. Back when I was in high school, my family lived in a small rural community called Jaius. In 2010, my parents answered their door to find a young blonde-haired girl selling the world's finest chocolate bars for a school fundraiser. Being nice, my mom bought a chocolate bar for each person in our home. Everyone ate theirs, but I decided to save mine for later, since it was lawn mowing day and I wanted a nice treat after a day of mowing grass. So I stored my chocolate bar away in the fridge. Nothing creepy so far, right? Fast forward to that afternoon. I go back to eat my chocolate after mowing the grass all day and it's gone. I'd seen my sister snooping around the fridge earlier, but she says she didn't see anyone take it, and neither of my parents took it. To this day, no one has admitted to eating the chocolate, and no one has seen anyone else take it. So what happened to my chocolate bar? Was it abducted by aliens? Was our fridge a portal to another chocolatey dimension? Was the little blonde chocolate saleswoman a witch? She was. We may never know. Gloria Ramirez, anyone? About 8.15pm on the evening of February 19, 1994, Ramirez, suffering from the effects of advanced cervical cancer, was brought into the emergency room of Riverside General Hospital by paramedics. She was extremely confused and was suffering from tachycardia and Shane Stokes respiration. The medical staff injected her with diazepam, midolazem, and lorazepam to sedate her. When it became clear that Ramirez was responding poorly to treatment, the staff tried to defibrillate her heart. At that point, several people saw an oily sheen covering Ramirez's body, and some noticed a fruity, garlic-like odor that they thought was coming from her mouth. A registered nurse named Susan Kane attempted to draw blood from Ramirez's arm and noticed an ammonia-like smell coming from the tube. She passed the syringe to Julie Gorchinsky, a medical resident, who noticed manila-colored particles floating in the blood. At this point, Kane fainted and was removed from the room. Shortly thereafter, Gorchinsky began to feel nauseated. Complaining that she was lightheaded, she left the trauma room and sat at a nurse's desk. A staff member asked her if she was okay, but before she could respond, she also fainted. Maureen Welch, a respiratory therapist who was assisting in the trauma room, was the third to pass out. The staff was then ordered to evacuate all emergency room patients to the parking lot outside the hospital. Overall, 23 people became ill and five were hospitalized. A skeleton crew stayed behind to stabilize Ramirez. At 8.50 p.m., after 45 minutes of CPR and defibrillation, Ramirez was pronounced dead from kidney failure related to her cancer. The Can-Am Missing Project is an interesting rabbit hole to venture down. Keith Parkinson's story is particularly curious to me. In April 1952, a two-year-old boy named Keith Parkinson in Ritter, Oregon, who vanished near Umatilla National Forest, was eventually found an astounding 12 miles away. He was found unconscious 19 hours later in a frozen creek bed. The journey would require the toddler to venture over two mountain ranges, as well as fences, creeks, and rivers. This case is just one of many where children disappear and are later found several hundred percent 
outside of the grid system carefully designed by search and rescue teams. Additionally, there are some rare cases where after tracking dogs that have led rescuers to a large river, search them, and they will explore to the other side and miles away, they find the kid. The Dyatlov Pass Incident the Dyatlov Pass incident refers to the mysterious unsolved deaths of nine ski hikers in the northern Ural Mountains of February 2, 1959. The area in which the incident took place was named Dyatlov Pass in honor of the group's leader, Igor Dyatlov. The experienced trekking group, who were all from the Ural Polytechnical Institute, had established a camp on the slopes of Kolat Sayakal which, when disaster struck. During the night, something caused them to tear their way out of their tents and flee to the campsite while inadequately dressed during a heavy snowfall and sub-zero temperature. Soviet Union investigators determined that six victims died from hypothermia and that the three others showed signs of physical trauma. One victim had a fractured skull, another had brain damage but no sign of an injured skull. Additionally, the tongues and eyes of a team member were missing. The explanations have been put forward as to the cause of the deaths. They include an animal attack, hypothermia, an avalanche, infrasound-induced panic, military involvement, or some combination of these. Access to the region was closed to expeditions and hikers for three years after the incident. Basically, a group of skilled hikers doing a routine mountain trek tore their way out of their tents in the middle of the night wearing almost nothing, ran into a blizzard, and froze to death. Several of the hikers found had sustained external injuries. An examination of the four bodies that were found in May shifted the narrative as to what had occurred during the incident. Three of the ski hikers had fatal injuries. Thibo Brignoles had major skull damage, and both Dubinina and Zolotaryov had major chest fractures. According to Dr. Boris Vazrazdeni, the force required to cause such damage would have been extremely high, comparing it to the force of a car crash. Notably, the bodies had no external wounds related to the bone fractures, as if they had been subjected to a high level of pressure. However, major external injuries were found on Dubinina, who was missing her tongue, eyes, and part of her lips, as well as the facial tissue and a fragment of the skull bone. She also had extensive skin maceration on the hands. It was claimed that Dubinina was found lying face down in a small stream that ran under the snow and that her external injuries were in line with putrefaction in a wet environment and were unlikely to be related to her death. The Kennedy assassination is still pretty crazy. For those who don't know, John Fitzgerald Kennedy was the President of the United States from 1961 to 1963. Despite having such a short term, he was an incredibly active leader, whose stances on civil rights, which he was for, and communist world power, which he was against, made him a target for enemies ranging from FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover to Cuban President Fidel Castro. On November 22, 1963, while parading through Dallas, Texas, President Kennedy was killed. Here's where the shit gets crazy. According to witnesses, three shots were heard, and video footage from the event shows the president very clearly being shot once in the neck and once in the head, both shots coming from in front of him. It was found that President Kennedy had also been shot in the back, and that the man in front of him had been hit in the back by the same bullet, meaning that it had come from behind the car. The investigators officially claimed that there was one bullet that had ricocheted off of the car at several points and caused all the wounds. Eyewitnesses claim that the sounds of gunshots came from a nearby grassy knoll, 
people who actually rushed to the knoll after the shooting to intercept the shooter, but found nothing. The man officially proclaimed to be the killer by investigators, Lee Harvey Oswald, was stationed in the window of a hotel room with a rifle and was reportedly a terrible shot, according to records from his time in the U.S. Army. He was in the Marines. Oswald was killed before he could reach trial, shot by Jack Ruby, who also died before he could reach his trial. However, he met his end from cancer. Mm. There are so many inconsistencies with the whole event, and what was released to the public barely made sense, not to mention several suspicious individuals, like the babushka lady, who stood near the grassy knoll, unafraid of the panic around her, and the supposed time traveler, who was captured in a picture, wielding what looked like a portable camera from decades later, were never identified. Something fishy definitely happened, and considering the number of powerful people, domestic and foreign, who wanted Kennedy dead, it's tough not to see something below the surface. The 35th American president was shot, and the details still don't add.